right, I gotta do it. I think it's going. I hope it's going. I see the light flash, that always means that it's going. Anyway, uh, this is December 28th, morning afternoon here. I'm staying uh, 1982. Spending Christmas here with Dad and Mom. We've got Susan, who twins up for the first time this year, and uh, Jolene is also here. Having a good time. We got a little bit snowed in today, but I think we're pretty well dug out now. Anyway, I, I, I'd like to interview Dad about a number of things. Uh, it's very interesting to me uh, what the situation was when he grew up, different kinds of things, his relation, brothers and sisters, his uncles, a little bit of the family history, the leaves of the history of the farm. That kind of thing because uh, this is something that is, I know someday my kids will sure be interested in, and I think it'd be nice for them to be looking at this tape and uh, get a little bit of input from you as to uh, what uh, you know what what all happened in one family. Ago. I certainly am very proud of I think our family history and so forth and what happened, uh, and I think it's uh, something that's kind of unique. I think we have, our family has something a lot of families don't have, and I think it's worth the effort to put it on tape. Anyway, uh, maybe let's just start off by saying, uh, or asking Dad, uh, well, first of all, how would your brothers and sisters go pretty much in order from youngest to, to, to oldest, uh, or oldest to youngest, rather? Katie was the oldest. Okay. Molly, Bertel, Bernard, Alfred, Norman. Sister Josephine, uh, Sister Bedanella, Sister Mary Bernard, and Francis. Is Francis the last one? Oh, yeah, second last one, second last one. Okay, and Sister Josephine comes before me. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, Sister Josephine, you, then Sister Petronella. Right. Then Sister then Fran then Francis. Then Sister Mayor Bernard. Okay. okay. And uh, you were born in the uh, 1917. Right? June the 25th. That's right. How about, uh, you know what, what the ages were on any of the others or when they were born? Maybe not, huh? That's just no, keep track just of them. Uh, Where's my older brother? He's. Ten years older than I am. So that's that's you always remember that. Yeah, that's one of the yeah. Yeah. But, And your dad's name was Joseph. Yes. And your mom's name was Marie, right? Teresa. Teresa Marie? Teresa. Just plain Teresa. Yeah. I didn't know that. And your grandfather, his name was Mike. Michael. That's a good name. I always, I, I always thought that was a good name for a great grandfather. <laughs> oh, you're trying to brag of it. I guess so. I guess so. Great <laughs> uh, name. What do you know about? Uh, uh, okay, Mike was, of course, is the one who homesteaded the property that eventually your dad Joe farmed and eventually got handed over to you and that Sam has now. What? Uh, what do you know about? Uh, let me see. A long time ago, when Mike came on over, a little bit about that history. Probably a little bit fuzzy, but it was right around the Civil, Civil War, wasn't it? Yes, yes. He come, come over here in the, right after the Civil War. He was farming down at Cold Spring. Right. And you know, in the Civil War, you could get somebody, he was supposed to go serve in the in the Army. And right. then you could get somebody that will fight for you. And then he got somebody, and it didn't take long. The Civil War was over when he come back, and that time, uh, any mouth-to-mouth -mouth agreement was real good to the people who kind of helped that. And they come back and they gave the farm to the guy, uh, to the person that, you know, as he had been promised, if he'd come back. And then he went up to, up here, uh, where he homesteaded up here, up here sure. in the Scientology area. And it's just nine miles north of Payne. Nine miles north of Payne. Good, good land. Sure. Sometimes he mentioned it was 
a feeling of blessing down there in those woods and light soil and up here sure. is good, good soil. And yeah. good your time. father mentioned this or your great no, or, or my, or my, my father mentioned that as a blessing. Yeah, I, I didn't get to really know my grandfather. My you didn't. You don't remember him, do you? Yeah, you don't know. My grandmother died when I was four years old, but I don't remember none of that. Right. Her name was Fred, and I'm pretty sure. Uh huh. And she was a Kohler? Right. She that was your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Pretty much the, this this is uh this part of the state represents a little bit of the borderline. You go straight east from here, the farms get poorer. Right. And you start here and you head west, they get a lot yeah, better, right. more flatter, right. better farming country. You get up towards Greenwell and Larry Grove, good farmland. Right. There's geological reasons for that when the glaciers came down, everything east it seems to be a lot more sandy, a little more sandy till everything east of here. And it just doesn't make the kind of soil that you get out down this part of the country. Yeah. Well, so that was kind of a big deal that uh, ended up with that, that good farm. What uh, what year did, did you take it over from uh, your, your dad? 1941. 1941. Did your dad stay in a farm then, or did he go, he go to Painesville? He moved to Painesville. That same year? Mm -hmm. 1941? Mm -hmm. with, with your mom? Mm -hmm. He was sickly a couple of years before, and then he was only there six months. For well, one year, he was one year in, in town, then he passed away. He was sickly already when he moved to town. I see. Leukemia. He, he had leukemia. He was sick, I guess, about three years since it started, and he didn't notice there was something wrong with mm -hmm. He passed away in 42. 42 in June. Right. How about your, your mom? Passed away in uh, 49. It was October, I think. Oh, yeah. So did she live alone here in town then those years mm -hmm. for seven well, years? Uh, see, uh, see, uh, Marie was with her. I see. When they moved Marie, to town, uh, Marie, Marie went and Francis went along, and then Francis got married in one of the first years. Then it was did she get married in '42? And then Marie was with. Her. I see. Yeah, I really didn't know much else. I took over the farm. I remember one time my dad asked me if I wanted to go for a priest. And that's one thing I remember, but I never had given it a thought. I don't think it was my calling on whether I found a one or two. Right. You know, I at least went to school, but right. I really didn't know much else except farming. And so I just fell into farming. I always liked it. And right. was very progressive. And, uh, right. You, uh, when you, through sixth grade, did you go to school? Yes. Sixth, sixth grade. It was the sixth grade. I didn't go all year. I just went a couple months during the winter. You know what made you decide to quit? Well, in school. What, what, what year in was school, it? In school, you know, there was five of us boys, and we were getting kind of carried away, you know. We didn't learn too much, and my dad said it. You, he found out about it. If he was the one learning it's good, might as well stay home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess everybody has, uh, you know, those periods yeah. in school where they're a little bit like a rascal. Yeah, right. I remember one time, Dave, I don't know if you remember this, uh, I was in school. I think Dave and I were the only two down at that same school that you went to school, in that country school, which is just right across the field from, uh, from that home farm. I remember Dave was there, and he was giving Mrs. Domke a rough time, and, uh, she says, you know, if uh, you don't like it here, you can go home, you know. And Dave says, I can go home? She says, yeah. I says, and Dave says, okay, I'm going home. We'll see you. So that was the middle of the daytime, and he went home. And uh, I guess Mom said, uh, what's the deal? What are you doing home? And, and Dave says, I guess Mrs. Donkey said I could go home. It's no problem. But she immediately took him, stuck him back in the car, and drove him back to school. <laughs> she knew that wasn't going to go. Oh, yes. I suppose this... Dumpkin knew the family too. She she knew that that would go. That's right. That's right. So you got the farm from uh, your dad in 1941, right? Mm -hmm. You remember what you? Okay, how how many acres was it? Was that? Two hundred acres. Two hundred acres. You know how much you paid per acre, just for history's sake? Well, it would be very interesting. Twenty dollars an acre. Now. Twenty dollars an acre. Was was that a lot at that time, or was that oh, kind of maybe a, 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 a good deal for your dad? A good deal. One thing, see, you worked 
to home till 24 years old, never got any salaries whatsoever. So instead of giving me salary, you know, you got your farm cheap. That time, land was probably worth about fifty dollars an acre. It was probably well worth about fifty. Mm -hmm. Very good. What about? Uh, was there any doubt that you'd ever get the farm? You were the youngest one. You were the only one there. Well, years ago, you know, that was the leisure tradition. If you had boys, or you'd start them farming. That was kind of the old leisure tradition. You know, that was kind of their feeling, you know, or responsibility, if that's what you call it, or tradition. That was the parents felt, you know. Right, right. The and if I got that right, I think we talked about this a little bit before. The parents, uh, the, if if the boys wanted to go into farming, the dad kind of went out of his way to buy another farm or to do something to get that boy started. Is that right? right? right. And in fact, that's what Joe did for uh, uh, Bertho, Bernard, and Alfred. Right. In in that order. Right, right, right. Right, and of course they pretty much had farms just within two, three miles of all right, around. Right, uh, right, you know, two miles apart than four farms. <coughs> all right. You, uh, it was kind of an interesting life, you know, with the family, you know. It's one of the interesting things was baseball go three years, the family go, boys go three years to the state, you know. That was something the great. State tournament, yeah, right, yeah. right. That was something great, you know. Mm -hmm. First year I remember was the greatest. We was playing down at Shakopee. Right. You know, the boys were behind, what was it, five to three, yeah. Huh? Then they started hitting, you know, and we won 12 to five, and when we got ahead they started hitting. I had a few drinks, I cr crawled up the fence, you know, once one gal sit back there, is that Roman Leisure up there? Well, I thought to myself, I'd better come down now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Boy, uh, I guess what amazes me a little bit is that we were talking the, the other day, and just some of the things that, back on the farm, I guess the lack of conveniences, of course, that we're pretty used to, but just as an example, it wasn't until when, when, when were you using a bath until 19, or a, uh, a tub for a bath until? Until 1948. 1948. Do you remember when you made the transition from hor from uh, horses to tractors, or did, when mm -hmm. you got your first tractor, were you still on the farm then? Or well, you, I got the first tractor uh, when I started farming, I had an old t Did your dad ever use a tractor? No, I guess he did some for plowing. 20 on steel wheels, no rubber in it. Oh, yes. He had a tractor boat since 1928, which, but then we just used it for trashing, that's why we didn't use it for plowing. Mm -hmm. But some 36, 38, then you got a plow for a tractor, and then you started plowing. That was the first thing you plow with a tractor, and everything else was horses. Yeah. But then gradually, you know. Horse, uh, yeah, horses horse went out and tractors took over. Yeah, it took over. Yeah. Hmm. In 1948, just give you an example, we bought a tractor with a color with it. Each tractor with a color with it for thousand dollars. What can you buy today for a thousand dollars? That's a good question, really. It's a tractor for a thousand dollars. Is that the one that Dave still has over this yeah, place yeah, now? Yeah, Dave still has that tractor. Still running today. Oh, 48. How old is that tractor? 48, 70, it'll be 30, 34 years old. 34, you're still running today. Yeah. It's very interesting. What about some other kinds of things? Uh, just trace a little bit. Uh, oh, how the maybe just early as far as you can remember. Maybe the kinds of things, some of the things that stuck out in your mind as far as uh, when you were growing up. Uh, maybe some of the things that you did and the way you did them really is a contrast with the way things are done now. Uh, well, all your work was by hand. You know, in the from 35 on, you. We had eight, nine hundred acres of land. You'd, you'd cut and shock about two weeks from uh, seven o'clock in the morning till dark at night, you know, and then you'd start trashing. With rain weather, you'd trash about four weeks, you know. And, uh, so you were busy. You didn't feel like going out when there to a dance or usually doing harvest. You stayed home and worked. You were tired at night to be there. That was two, two weeks for corn? No, that was for grain. Oh, okay. People didn't have much corn that time. Corn was very, it was 
flax and oats and barley and wheat. Right, right. There was very little corn in there. So it's had a little small salad full and then you picked a little. There wasn't, there wasn't really much corn. Boy, uh, for two weeks, uh, seven in the morning till dark, what, uh, boy, that had to be tiring. How many acres did that take care of? Was that just one farm? No, that, well, that was including all the farms. Bernal and Berthold? Yeah. Berth mm -hmm. When they got started in their farms, you went over to their places and, mm -hmm. and helped? They helped and trash and... Then they came cut. back home to help you too and it was right. all, you all worked together, yeah, right? Right. Cutting usually most of, most everybody did alone on his own family, but then trashing we had four places, you know. It took about four weeks, you know. But sometimes to get a rain weather in between, it would trash for two, three days, but otherwise you'd keep right on going. Mm -hmm. The fundamental difference when you trashed as opposed to what nowadays you do come by, what is, what's the difference there? Oh, you work a lot harder. You, know, you shock that stuff and load up the bundles, haul them in where combine you know, they go out with a combine, you just sit on there, you put it right through. You That's know. right. I used to thought that was hard work once in a while. They used to unload the boxes, you know, they didn't have self unload boxes, at least when I was growing up, and uh, that was, uh, uh, that wasn't, I guess it wasn't too bad. No. <laughs> I guess I didn't have it made. I guess that was I, the easy part when you trashed it. One guy in the elevator, you know, shoveled the box and up. That was the easy part, you know. But it was dust too, it wasn't it was the easy part. Right. Right, the toughest part was throwing those bundles around? Mm -hmm. Go out in the field, load up a load, and come in, unload, go back, get out another load, get, go back, get another load. Hmm. But usually you had more people together, you kind of enjoyed that more as shocking, shocking. You could do all by yourself, trashing, well, you'd have lunch together. And it kind of becomes a little bit of a social kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, right? right, you had a little more fun with it, where shocking, you'd shock by yourself. There was it was getting a little, getting that time, getting a little more boring, you know. I'll bet uh, if when everybody got done and everybody when you got it all done with trashing, but that was a pretty good time, huh? Right, it was good. Pretty good time, yeah, for, it but you had good celebrations. Yeah, there too, right. Then you had to go out for a night, have a good time. <laughs> Wash all that dust down, right? Right, right. <laughs> oh boy. That was a part of life. I don't know if, I think we people were just as happy as today when they uh, got all these conveniences, I think. I think we were just as happy. Sure. It was just a part of life, you know. Uh, things sure, you laughed, you told jokes. Yeah, you right. Yourself. We, were, we were happy. Sure. Good, good. Let me see, try to think of some other interesting questions. Do you know, well, do you remember how old you were when you started to get up in the morning and help with chores? Or it's probably as far back as you can remember, I'll bet. Right, right. You were seven, eight years old. You called every morning and you had to go the barn and chores. Well, when I was 10, 11 years old, I was done with school. So when I wasn't in school, I was in the field. No field work with horses. I plowed many a day with horses. Call them day for day. Monday horses. morning till uh, Saturday night, I wanted to go there, right? Or plow, same thing. You plow, you know, all that land you got done trashing with, you had to plow all the yeah. fall and then you'd spring to the other distance. Yeah. Hmm. I think these, these, uh, my dad and the whole these, they're good people, but they make you work hard too. They, you know, they, uh, they, they always had something to do for you. They only learned how to work. But they, I, I felt they're great people. Sure. What kind of, uh, what kind of dad was your dad? If you're to describe him, say, in oh, you know, just generally terms, and you, I'm sure, it's a lot of your uncles still have. Oh what, yeah, that's how would you would describe him? You mean uh, size-wise, the personality? Personality, size-wise. Oh, to me, he was a great man, but uh, I think he weighed around like 50 pounds. A little smaller than him. Yeah, he was a smaller than him. To me, he was a great man. He dealt anybody. I think you give me a lot of good information. Was he pretty strict? I imagine he was oh, pretty strict. Oh, yeah. He had, I feel a lot of times he had more temper than I got. He could get pretty mad sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which after a while he get kind of used to it. But. 
Like what? Any examples? Like oh, well, something go wrong or something of your fault. He kind of eats the off of the handle. <laughs> he let you out. But I usually, you know, I usually get along with it pretty good. But all these old people, like the school teacher, too, they, they'd get mad. They had to, you could hear them from blocks away the way they'd holler at you. Which, which is some of the past. I don't believe in that. Yeah. Right. Right. Any uh, particular stories or anecdotes, kind of uh, things uh, surrounding your dad that illustrated what his personality was like? Or, oh, uh, I don't know, maybe that's a little bit of a tough, tough question. Well, he, did, he was good company. He get a bunch of younger people to get him, you know, he could entertain him. He'd have stories and a few little tricks, you know. He was, I know some uh, neighbor of mine, like Ralph Lightshack, he remember he'd come there and he'd have some of his tricks, you know, and kind of, you know, what young people enjoy, they were young kids at the time. stories and some of the tricks, you know. A man had 26 sheep, one of them died. How many did he have left, you know, in that order? Sure. Sure. What well, with, with your mom? What was she if you were such oh, a great mother? Oh, she's a great mother. She's a great mother. She's probably a little more serious than that was, but that's her. But it's good. She was a great mother. She learned us a lot. And Sometimes, you know, everybody kind of feels things he don't know what he should do, you know, I think in that respect, sometimes he was just uh, even more helpful than that, you know, like a lot of times you don't know what to do, you go to your mother, you know, mm -hmm. in that respect, I think she was really good. How many, uh, were in your dad's family? I guess it was five boys and two girls, but one boy uh, was six and all, but one of them died, he was young. Mm -hmm. The five that, that uh, grew up and got to be married, and they all farmed around there, one had seven wolves, they got had seven boys, and, and you know, all them boys, in the tradition, the way I said before, that you start your boy farming, all of these boys farmed around here, you know, and, that's where all the sleepers come from. That's right, you get a lot of... Sure. Sure. So, your dad had how many brothers? Five. Five. Well, one of them passed away. Sure, so four. And what you're saying four. is those other, aside from Joel, they got started on farms yeah. or, around the area. Mm -hmm. Did Mike help those guys with right. those farms? Right, same thing like right. my dad. Right. And Joe was the youngest then? Right. That's why well, he got the whole place. That's what's one thing that happened a lot of times that day. It's too the youngest one would get the whole place. At least they hold the longest. Right. Yeah. Right. How about in, in your mother? Like, what was your mother's main name? Hamish, right? Hamish, yeah. How many were in her family? There was two boys and also seven girls. Like they all farmed their own here too. Then they just when the girls got married to went to farm. There wasn't nothing like going to the city, so they just started doing That's right, that's right. They just uh, became a housewife somewhere, a farmer's wife somewhere. Mm -hmm. The only one I see lives two miles from our home place in the hemisphere. The mother was born. You know where that is, you know, Richard Hamish? Oh, okay. All right. Let's see here. Well, that's all kind of interesting. I got, you know, there are lots of questions, lots of things I can ask. Let's see. Uh, It was kind of interesting. First you started farming, you know, you haul cream, you had skim milk you fed to the pigs, you know. And mm -hmm. 
first cream was Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to haul your cream, you know, and then uh, after a while it went into milk. Well, milk you haul every day with a pickup. Sure. It's a lot more work right, than right, hauling right, the right. milk as opposed right. to just hauling the cream. Yeah. Do you remember how many uh, cows you started milking even when you were young and through the years how it, how, how it went up? Mm, well, the most I milked before I was married, I guess, by hand was nine one winter. That was the most. You know, you lived six, seven, that was probably most one person. You know. okay, Did people. you sell it even in the wintertime then? Did you sell the cream? Oh, yes, oh, yeah. You always sell cream with horses. Even in the wintertime, so you'd haul it to, to Lake Henry? Would you right. save it for a couple of days? Would right. you make like a yeah. once a week trip? Or? Right, you would just get a smoker. You'd probably have enough cans on hand. You'd save the cream, and then you haul it all the one time. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what kind of uh, profits? that you made even on the farm in those early years? Uh, like what was a, a, a good year, I guess a good year now for, well, I don't know what a, what a dairy farmer kind of makes, but in, in those days, uh, I guess what I'm trying to get at is that nowadays, okay, for instance, or my brother Sam, he makes most of his money on the cows. Mm -hmm. Was it the same thing in those days? No. People were more versified. First, when we started, we had milk cows, we had uh, beef, kept some steers, hawks, and chickens. It was versified. And a lot of times you felt that one thing wasn't good, you made some money, and the other, if eggs were down, probably your cream was up, or if cream or butterfat was down, your eggs were up. So you kind of felt it that way. But then the, you know, always, we would always sell, sold some grain to the you know, side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through the years, which do you think accounted for most of your, your income? Or? Well, usually we felt the uh, cream or milk that was for expense, and then we sold hops or steers or something that was extra profit. That was a profit. And in uh, in '47 uh, in fall, I bought that uh, that Gooley farm. And I had some money, I paid some down, and next fall I paid them off. We had some flags that uh, went 20 bushels to the acre, and the flags was between 6 and $7 a bushel, and then we had uh, 60 acres of it. So when you got that farm paid for in one year, which was quite aggressive for me. Whatever made you decide to get that farm, do you think? Well, again, there was the easy tradition, you know, and you know, I was used to having a lot of land, you know. Well, the way I grew up, I had a lot of land, and I was looking ahead, you know. Sure, because your boys were around 47. Yeah, yeah they were a few boys already, and, and I was used farming a little bigger, you know. Mm -hmm. Is it something, uh, did you have to ponder and consider that uh, decision a while, or is it something that no, was pretty natural because it was so I, close? I didn't even go look at the farm. Well, I worked around it all my life. I uh, I figured no way I can go around with buying land of that kind of guy. Mm -hmm. Did he come to you directly? He go come to me uh, to sell it, yeah. He didn't have any boys or? No, he didn't have a family, did he? He didn't have no family. How was he related to Joe Gully? Or was Matt yeah. and Jake's brother, yeah, right. brothers? Right, it was Joe's uncle. Right, right. That was the old Cooley Homestead tour somewhat, you know, where the goes can start. I see. And then Matt Gully lived in that old house in Genesis mm -hmm. Place, that old one, which is mm -hmm. torn down now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was in 47 when you bought that farm. Mm -hmm. How many acres was that? 140 acres. That time paid 15,000 for 140 acres. It was a little over a hundred dollars an acre, but he thought it was a pretty good price that time. But I knew farming and I knew land, I knew the buildings, I knew, I knew there was no way I could go around on um, land like that. Mm -hmm. What was the total price on it? Fifteen thousand, mm -hmm. hundred forty acres. Okay. And that's how big the farm is now, hundred forty? Well, it's hundred eighty. I bought another forty from John B. Fuchs, right across from the Legion, from the schoolhouse. Oh, yes. You remember what year that was in? Not exactly. I think I can remember it myself. I think I, so it had to be sometime in the early 50s. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe even you if it was 52. Because I remember there's a big uh, grove of yeah. woods out in the middle of that place, and when we bought it, we tore those trees out, right? right. And yeah. for the longest time, we found stumps, and uh, yeah. I think they had a dump in there, too, or some more pieces of glass and stuff. 
And I was very young, so that, I think it was the early 50s, maybe. maybe well, maybe it couldn't have been early 50s. I was born 52, yeah. and I, if maybe. I remembered, maybe 55, 56, 57 in there. Right. They can, they can, oh, man, they can. So they can look it up, but I don't know. Yeah. Can, uh, Remember what that was an acre when you bought that? The $100 an acre. See, again, there was no buildings on. Usually, land with building house working on. But again, I knew buying a 40 right in the corner, you can't go around on $100 an acre land. You know, I knew that. Sure. They come, they come right up to the you know, they the one to sell it for. I don't know, like, and I didn't think, I knew I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Which so. makes a nice farm, though. 140 acres is kind of small, especially with that creek in there. 180 acres make it, makes a little nicer farm than that. Sure, sure. There's one more farm that you bought. Right. That was in 68. Again, we paid only a little over $100 an acre for that one. It was 116 acres, we paid $19 for it. Some people thought I had a hole in my head when I bought that, you know, but still we made out pretty good. That actually is pretty good soil up there. It's just right. a little bit hilly, a little, little bit, bit rocky. rocky, yeah. Otherwise, it's good on south of ground and Good old scrum, we even corn to it, you don't get too many heavy rain. Mm -hmm. Bought that from Paul Sand, right? Right. Um, you remember what was going through your head when when you bought that? No. Or like what you were thinking? Were you in, at well, that time I you already had time. I knew again I knew again you couldn't go wrong on the little water dog and make land. I knew you couldn't go wrong. Right. We that needed, Dennis was man, we need the barn for young stock. And when we looked at that barn, you know, there was a barn there with a main green for young stock. Right. And then, uh, that I, and again, I knew I couldn't go wrong at that time. Mm -hmm. Well, is there anything in the life you grew up or on the farm that you would like to, what were you most interesting? Part of growing up, or whatever you call it. Well, uh, that's kind of a good question. I don't know. Uh, so I look back to my childhood. Most interesting part? I don't know. I guess as long as I can remember, I I guess I was always a little, and you realize it's a little more too. Uh, I was a little more inclined towards studying and learning. I really liked books from a very early age, and for that reason, I maybe didn't. Uh, Maybe didn't really was didn't have the attitude that maybe a typical farm boy ought to have or growing up. I don't know. I just maybe I didn't feel that close. But I think a lot of it too is there were just quite a few of us there. You kind there of felt the, was, I'm sure the good old farm that it's. Yeah, good. that's right. I, I, yeah, being realistic about mm -hmm. it, I knew we all couldn't farm it. I guess even at that time, I I remember at a very early age I liked to learn, and I don't know what it was because there's a couple of years between my older brother Dave and I. And, Maybe if I worked with mom a little bit more, where I liked books quite a bit more, but I remember starting school, and I remember Miss Domke was saying between David and myself, there's a difference of night and day. And I, I guess it was just that uh, I was always interested in books, and I got, I guess it was my goal to do something maybe just a little bit different. I didn't dislike it. If I were to look back, looking back on it, uh, the, the, the farm thing, uh, it was really a, it was a pleasure to grow up in a big family in a farm, and I think that is the way to grow up. I, I, I only wish my my own kids could grow up in a similar environment somehow. I know it's not going to be possible, but I think you learn to work with people and get along with people. You know, you got to get the job done. I remember there are many times uh, you would assign us duties, chores, whatever, and uh, and if you had to be gone in business for a day, you, we really worked together, we cooperated to get the job done as fast as we could to allow an extra hour or two for ball at the end of the day or baseball, and you kind of learn to work with, with people. Mm -hmm. I think there's one of the things, uh, certainly there's no opportunity to get spoiled in a farm situation because you really, you learned what hard work was all about. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, even my tradition will keep you as boys occupied. I didn't mind you playing ball, but with my the idea was keep you busy, keep you occupied. Right. I think there was something, you know, you don't sure. get in the mischief of TV. That was one of my main goals. <laughs> right. Sure, well. getting the work done was too, but 
still, you know, it's, it's, uh, would you be interested in all the offices I had? Oh, sure, sure, definitely. There was, uh, um, Treasury Lake Henry Club Creamery, Secretary of Lake Henry Telephone Company, and then there was, uh, Grand Knight. Remember what uh, years those were or anything? No, it become a little bit fuzzy. No, or even, even about, say, late 40s or... Well, I'd say all about the 50s. Right early, the early 50s or right in the 50s, though. They can be, and then things become so, uh, what would you call it, when advanced, you know, and you had to bury the cable on the telephone, and I definitely felt it'd be better to turn it over to Northwest Valley, you know, where, where people were more inclined, you know, to the, what, which way the route to go, and then there was, uh, Grand Knight and the Knights of Columbus of Painsville. And that's one year term, every year is a different one, usually. That right. I guess was 66 and 67. Right, right. And then I got on the school board, got appointed in 1970, till uh, I'm still on there in 1972. 82, right? 82, it's here. Right. Sure. So that's, uh, I sometimes feel it's not just what you learn in school, but I felt I was always interested in do some reading, and I think you learn as you go. Sure, sure. Like to, you know, Common sense, sense a lot of times is, you know, right, that's something you don't I, learn. And, right, you know, that's that what I always felt experience. you used a lot, you know. That's, I think it moves common sense in life. I think it brings you through a lot. Sure, sure. Wow. Um, you have three sisters who are, who are nuns. Now that's that's saying something a little bit right there. And I guess uh, did your did your mother like preach a lot of religion? I'm sure it was a very religious family. But uh, when, right. when they were right around you, you and Sister Josephine earlier earlier than you, Patrick, you know, younger than you. What you know? What do you think caused the fact that they well, we decided were, to become nuns? We were kind of brought up in a religious home. We didn't say the rosary during some time, but we did say it, said it about every night, and kind of we were a religious family, and I think that's your calling. I, I'm, I was real happy what I did in my life, but I feel today that it probably that my calling was to be a priest when my dad probably asked me, I don't know, went to St. John's or probably um, mm -hmm. would have become a priest if that had been my calling, but I, I feel I've done a lot of good in other fields. And, uh, so I'm real happy with what I did. One thing I know, I know Deb, that you, uh, the wine, you always mention the wine was one of the reasons why you didn't become a priest, huh? Well, that, that was just my joke, I guess. You gotta say something, man. Sure, sure. I never, Maybe I never know. used it as reason. Really, most, most people knew me, they knew it that was the reason. I just used it as a joke. Yeah. yeah. I used to like it the beer real well in the early years. You'd haul cream or milk, you you couldn't just stop in town every time you haul milk, you have a few to use. I had a visit with the neighbors. I think that was great years ago. People, especially in wintertime, you haul your cream or milk and you'd visit in town and play a little cards. I think that was great. I think that's what people miss nowadays. Mm -hmm. You get so close to your neighbors and friends. Right. Right. And people then they, they didn't get around like they did now, so they needed some of them. Mm -hmm. When you started out, you ended up with nine your nine children, seven boys, two girls, in that order. When you started out, uh, did you know how, how big a family that you'd no. like to have or care to have, or you were just going to see what was going to happen? You're just going to go to work and see what happened now. I think mother and myself, we never discussed how many we were going to have. I think that's, that was part of life. You, you, know, you kind of felt that was responsibility. And, but if I, if we had to raise nine children in town today, in the city, I should say, I think it'd be, it'd be hard, but I didn't think it was that hard to find. It. But again, I'd like to add that we had a, we had a nice family. 
given good to us, and I had work to do. We all pitched in. I think that's the good thing. Then even then, someone who moves to town took the girls along. You know, they thought them girls, they were going to be good for nothing. But I think they turned out pretty good. Oh, yes. Yes, very proud of them. Very proud of the younger sisters, so yes. What, uh, we talked a little bit about religion. What other, uh, do you think, uh, what kind of influence religion has had in your, in your life? Just talk a little bit about your attitudes, your views towards it. These days you go to church every day, for an example. Maybe it's out of a lot of thanks. I don't know. Well, I think that's one of the big reasons, you know, we were so fortunate, you know, that I just definitely feel we were blessed. That's why I wanted to return return now uh, to some for the Lord. I feel it like we're going to Mass in the morning now. If I haven't got 20 minutes for the Lord, for everything what you've given to me, I think not even worth living. Right. But again, that's part of the religion we brought up, you know. Maybe not all people feel like that. Yeah. Uh, but that's part of it. And there's a little past time uh, to, but it, part of it is we feel it's part of Thanksgiving, giving back to the Lord for what He has given us. You know, mm -hmm. but it's past time to get up in the morning, go to church, and you go have breakfast, and your daily routine. You know, it's, I think it's healthy to walk two blocks every morning in the shower. Sure. One thing, getting back to religion, you know, I always feel you. Know, there's two things you can't argue, that's religion and politics. You can argue for two hours when you're over, but it's over with, I don't think you're any further than it's all the thing, yeah. No, you're any further when you start it. I'm not, I'm not a real great arguer for, in religion or politics whatsoever. I like to stand up for my rights, but I don't think you gain much by arguing religion or politics. Mm -hmm. You're gonna have two two parties, which is good, you know, and yeah. you get your up and downs, you know, it's it's part of life now. Right, right. The uh, I guess right now, okay, seven boys, two girls, they're all pretty much grown out and they're all, all doing their thing. Uh, they do quite a variety of things. You got three dairy farmers out of the bunch, three mm -hmm. out of nine, that's thirty three percent. But, and, uh, and with David, there's four farming. I feel kind of proud of it. Mm -hmm. like, not that I'm not what you're doing, but sure. I got again, like I said, I like to express my opinion. I feel kind of proud. Sure. But it's easy, especially nowadays. You know, like even starting to see that uh, you know it's getting into money nowadays. It ain't that easy. Like years ago, like start Dennis or else not into it. We bought the land cheap mm -hmm. with inflation. There was not into it. You know, but now we start a boy farming. It's getting rough, you know, it's... In other words, it, it costs more, uh, of course, due to inflation these days, but it's even something more than that. It even even with inflation taken into consideration, it's still, right, big, right. It's still I, a it's, lot bigger. It's harder. It's uh, one, uh, one big factor thing is your interest rates now. The price they pay for land isn't so bad, but then your interest, you're just, you just... It eats it away as mm -hmm. you go, you know, you aren't making any, uh, much headways, you know. If you just make your interest and then uh, you ain't paying off in the principal. So, uh, principal don't concern you as much as the interest. Mm -hmm. And then farming is so different parts and uh, what you pay for everything nowadays, it's, it's no comparison. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought that you wish you would have went farming? Well, I uh, was just talking a little bit to Steve yesterday, and we were uh, we're talking about different things. Uh, and I said, Steve, you know, as I see you in a farm here, and as I'm thinking now that I may too, of course, we just uh, been uh, blessed with Sean and Nicole, our twin children, and. Uh, for the first time, I can see myself in that kind of environment. I, Steve said something like yesterday. It's uh, he says, he says I got Brent. Of course, he just got Brent about a year and a half ago now. He says, a family life. He says I don't go out much anymore. He says this is all I ever wanted. He says if I can't be happy now, 
He says, I'll never be happy. And it's, again, I, I, felt, I feel a little bit the same way. I think my days of maybe running around and that kind of thing is over. Right now, my biggest priority, my biggest priority is family life. I really think uh, that's where it's at. My business, whatever comes second. And the farm is ideal for that, that kind of thing because you, know, you don't have the distractions. Steve said what he looks for the most now is coming back in from chores and he plays with Brent and uh, doggone it, that really, uh, that's, that's all it takes to be happy, you know, something like that. You look at you look at your offspring and I'm sure no one realizes this as well as you do perhaps, that uh, you know, you look at them, you see what they're doing and you just, you know, you look at your wife and uh, they're a product of your love and your dedication for each other and you can just point to them, that's what they represent and it gives you a nice warm feeling. I know that's the way Susan and I feel about it, and uh, I'd really like to get to a smaller community, or maybe even a. Uh, I said, Steve, I don't know if I, you know, could farm, but for the first time, I can imagine myself doing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I talked a little bit about it yesterday. I, I, I think, uh, I don't know. Maybe I would like. Uh, I guess I always like to think maybe a lot more, and maybe in the farm, there's just too much physical labor. I like to sit there and use my mind a lot more, and that's what I get paid to do more rather than doing physical labor. That would still be a tough thing, the, the physical labor end of it. Not that I couldn't do it, I think I could do it, I'm as strong as anybody else, but it's just that the uh, challenge isn't there as much. I think there's a challenge there. I think it takes a really good manager to be a farmer. you got to be thinking, you got to be on your toes, you got to stay up with the techniques and so forth. Basically, That's yeah. the part that I like most about it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to add, Mike, uh Terry told me once, it was years ago, he was in the cities two, three years, you know. If I, if I, I'd like to get out of the cities. If I get the bellows, I make the money what I make down the cities, I'd move right away. Well, I said, Terry, look at it this way, and I, I want to relate that to you too. Look at all the people in the cities. I said, they're in the same shoe as you are. they got to bring up their family in the cities. You do the best you can. It's all a person can do. Sure. And the same way with you, Mike. If that's you're in that position, you do the best you can. Sure. There isn't such a thing sure. as better than the best. And, uh, sure. Which I'm sure if I uh, just would have wanted to, and if you uh, if you got good management, I, I think I could have started you also. Pardon me. Sure. But we like you in different fields too. Sure. You know? I'm proud to have you with all of us. I'm proud to have David with teaching. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. I think it could give me a little experience, you know, sure. what everything. Sure. Yeah. I, uh... So I think you might, I think yeah. even, I don't know why I just popped that question, it just comes to my mind, but look at how many, what's the population of them? Oh, yeah. There's, uh, look at how many people we get. If people with larger families, sure. they uh, they got to do it, no? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. There's no doubt it has, it has to be done. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, Oh, there's, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy. Uh, yeah, I can if see it came it. down there as a bottom line, I'd probably still be maybe happier out over there than on a farm. But, you know, you, you, you can't have everything. You realize that, and you know that I've learned that from you. You know, you can always point to the other guy and say, boy, in that way it's nicer. You can make him say to the farm, boy, it's nice to be your own boss on the farm. But on the other hand, uh, you know, I put in 40 hours a week, and that's it. And, uh, you know, I don't, uh... You know, I mentioned sometimes somebody gets a week or two weeks vacation. Sure. I, I say, oh, that beats farming. But you uh, know me, uh, probably growing up, that uh, I didn't really mean it. Sure. I, I use it as a joke, which... Sure. I think I agree with you what you said, that uh, you, uh, the pasture always looks green on the sure. other side of the fence, not... Yep, yep. Right. And it's part of life, you got trouble sometimes, and I feel if somebody says that he never had troubles, he better look out because if he gets them once, that he probably can't accept them. That's right, that's right, that's right. No, uh, one of the things that, oh, I, I, I guess as I, as years go by, I start thinking about different things, and I think the three most important things in my life, you know, that are very important to me is, uh, Number one the, uh, is my health. I have to be thankful for. I think as long as you're healthy, you can get about, you can do your job, you can do things, you know, you're not confined to a wheelchair, and that's, that's a very important thing. You're feeling good all the time. Secondly is your friends, and we have a good set of friends out in Denver, and we're really, you know, uh, some truly good friends.
Begley family, and I think along with the family comes both our family that we have and the family you come from, and we're, you know, that is very important to me too. And I think religion is pretty much tied into that. Well, actually, religion is actually tied in all of them as far as I'm concerned, but I think with those three things, one should be very, with that, you I think you pretty much have everything. Right, you got a lot, a lot of, yeah. you got that, you got a lot of things to be thankful for. Sure, sure. And, uh, Another thing uh, that I'm thinking these days, philosophies or whatever you want to call it, is success. I think yeah, everybody should ask themselves, well, what is it to be successful? What everybody should ask themselves, if I'm going to be successful 40 years from now, what will I, what will I like to say about what I've accomplished and so forth? And uh, so what do I have to start in doing today too? Yeah, to be that's successful right. in 40 years. Exactly. And I think if. One thing that I've come up with here is not, yeah, I, this goes on to what I said before, my first priority is my family right now. If I want to be successful, I think uh, having a happy family life is the first and foremost thing. So my wife and my kids are always coming before my job. My job is very important. It gives us a livelihood, a means of, uh, you know, uh, for shelter, food, and that kind of thing. But uh, food, you know, I think... Uh, a good family life and peace, family peace, I think that's that's where all uh, happiness starts from. It starts at home. If you're unhappy at home, I don't think you can go out, step a foot outside the door of your house and uh, be happy anywhere else, doing anything else. I think you were real fortunate to get a good wife like so. Going to oh, Denver, you. you know. Sure. I'm sure you you had 100, 200 you could have picked from. Sure, going sure. To Right, I, uh... That's, that's a big thing in life. Same way with Teresa, you know, I'd probably never accomplished this, but she was conservative and the site clean and good. That's worth something. Yeah, yeah, it sure is. You Certainly know, not uh, take for granted. A good wife is, is part of the family, not that I mean uh, financially and socially, cleanliness, what have you. And you know, you look some of the pictures in that, in that uh, anniversary book, not? You guys had all the nice white shirts on. It's work to wash them, huh? Sure, sure. She'd be washing every day a lot of times. Mm -hmm. The reserve clothes, the baseball clothes, I wasn't counting just the regular clothes that we had to wear every day. Right. Uh, sure. So I think that's, and again, that's a blessing, not? Yeah. Why, why some. Uh, have so much family trouble, I don't know, it's, it's hard yeah. question. Yeah. It sure is. It sure is. It's unfortunate that you see it too often though. Right, uh, right, it's... Uh, and you feel fortunate when you aren't... Involved. Right, when you aren't involved. One of the things you've always said, you always said, life's too short for this, or life is too short for that. And boy, I tell you, I guess, the first time I remember you saying it, well, I didn't mean a... Uh, it didn't mean that much to me, I guess, but I, I thought about it a couple times since then. You keep saying it, uh, fighting, whether it be with your wife or other people. And, you know, boy, I guess, short words are never spoken. You figure you're only here on the earth a short period of time. If you get in a confusion, uh, well, I, should, I guess I should say not so much confusion as contention, uh, quarrels, and it's, it just simply isn't worth it. Nothing is to be accomplished by that kind of that's one thing my father learned to do. Then they say, you know, they'd cross, right, to a field with horses. He said, just leave them drive to He said, you know, they'll drive off. They won't stay on. He said, you know, you know, you know the better neighbor step with you and everything. A lot of talk. A lot of good, I think, I thought a lot of good thinking. Yeah, yeah. What other kind of sayings did he have? Do you remember any kind of sayings or things that he taught you specifically like that? That's kind of interesting. Because that is, uh, you know, it's 20 something that you mentioned it, because that kind of makes me feel good. That is his philosophy. That's been your philosophy. And you know, I was just out at uh, Steve's place yesterday, my brother Steve's place, and here he's, he's of course, he's fortunate. He's, he's on a farm now that he got from uh, Gene uh, Kubrick, is that his name? Kubrick's, 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 whatever. And anyway, he's a very fine man. Steve thinks a lot of him. But anyway, he sold the farm to Steve. And he comes out and helps Steve quite a bit. And of course, it's pretty natural that an old guy like that who holds that farm very near and dear to him uh, all those years, he, uh, when he gets out on the farm, his ways are going to kind of come forth. And he says, well, this is the way I used to do it, and so forth and so forth. 
Well, there's Brother Steve, you know, he's he's got to run his show too, you know. But, and I did pose a question to Steve. I said, is there any time where there's a little difference of opinion what ought to be done? He says, yeah, yeah, he says, quite a bit, but, you know, he says, life is too short. He says, life is too short. This guy comes out and helps me. I just do it his way. And sometimes when he's gone, I do it my way anyway. And then he comes back, he doesn't know the difference. He maybe forgot about it or whatever. But it's interesting that started with, 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 with your uh, dad already. Went down to you. And that same kind of spirit now is handed down to Steve. And, you know, you just wouldn't be surprised. Uh, number one, that uh, first that Brent might get it from Steve someday. And that maybe someday Joe actually got it from Mike. Well, down to the one. Right. Kind of interesting. Those are the kind of things that right. you don't get out of books, right? Right, right. You don't, you don't get out of books. Those are the kind of things that it's kind of just plain living. Mm -hmm. That's what, that's what you learn about. If you had to list, uh, well, I think you've had, I'm very proud to say, I think that you've had many accomplishments through your lifetime. What? If you had to list some of what you think are your, your biggest accomplishment, accomplishments or achievements, what you feel the best about, what do you think that you would have? What do you think that you would say? What do you think? What do you mean? Uh, oh, just uh, what is it giving you? Uh, well, anything. Joy, whatever whatever comes to your mind. Maybe financial, well, maybe that would be a part of your success, but uh, the most joy, the most satisfaction. We talked uh, a little, we talk a little bit about success. Actually, yeah, but the most joy or, uh, you know, money, I made that remark, money is everything, you know, I think the family, that's my greatest joy. Mm -hmm. Like, just think about, you come home for Christmas to me, and people come and see me, that's, that's my greatest joy. You know, money is a sideline, it's nice to have, you know, but yeah. it's really, it's really not all the happiness. Mm -hmm. but it's nice to have, I don't know. Right. That always tells me, you know, it's uh, harder for a rich man to get to heaven than for a uh, camel to get through the eye of a needle. So <laughs> again, I know knowing him that, you know, he likes to kill me, yeah. which, which is fine. It's fun. You gotta have fun. Sure. Get. But I think the family. I think that would be, would be one of the priorities they give me. Yeah. Uh, they've given a lot of us a lot of joy. You know. And different things, you know, like Celine being the, what do you call it, the queen of the school, and yeah. you know, going, we went down to parades, and I think your family gives us nice. all in all, one after the other gives us a great achievement. You go to weddings, it's a great job. Go on and go to Ohio to a wedding. stopping point. I tell you, I think it's kind of nice. I'd like to do this uh, maybe every time I'm up or so. Maybe I'll see you. Yeah, I think this is kind of nice. What I'd really like to do is get the whole family around just ask you questions. I'm sure like Dave, for instance, and right. when they all have farming questions, how'd you do this or how'd you do that? And right. uh, get the whole family each one to have a few, few answers about the uh, next oh, year. Uh, that to get, yeah, to get that would really up be on. nice. That'd you be can't cool. do everything in one year, you know. No. This, this year, that was something different. That was great, you know, that uh, these commercials, whatever you call them, put a few on, but something different again. Right, right. Yeah. And you never know, one of these years, it might be one of the family, or you never know when our time is up. If sure. I won't go all around the world, it's easier we get no older. Sure. You never know. Sure. You never, it's a funny way how the Lord picks people, and you know, nobody knows who's the next year. That's true, that's true. That's what Jeline said the other day, and sure, sure something that I think about every now and then, and you don't, uh, in some ways you don't like to think about it, but on no, the other right. hand, you no, know it's inevitable, it's going to happen. Right, that's nobody right. likes to, to die, but sure. it's natural, it's natural sure. people, but uh, sure. we're going to eat, a certain way of thinking of right. it. I guess I was driving along the road the other day and I drove down along through a bunch of small towns and a bunch of cemeteries and I was just thinking, boy, I wonder all the yeah. Christmases that they had with their families or whatever and they all end up in the same place. I guess there's no exception to that. Everybody went. I don't care if you're Julius Caesar. Yeah, well, one thing you know I do, I watch the papers. 
as long as my name isn't in there, I'm still around. But if I uh, have a name, <laughs> 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 That's good. Well, I, so do you kind of like this kind of thing that we're doing here? I think it's, it's up to you. If you like it, I do the best I can. As no, I like it. I really.